we are all, we are all building something in life amen and uh, with intent or without intention every hour goes by every day goes by every week every month goes by we're building our life and it's important that we take care of how we build our life it's important that we are intentional about how we build our life so that our life it stands the test of times and not only we build our life in this on this earth but we also are building in eternity whether you realize it or not According to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 11 to 15, Apostle Paul tells us that everything that we build there or for there will be tested by fire. Everything we build here in life is going to come through two tests. It's going to be tested by fire and it's going to be tested by water. Okay, turn to your neighbor and say fire. No, just turn to your neighbor and say fire. fire. Turn to your other neighbor and say water. water. All right, so everything in life will be tested by these two elements. Let me put it this way. Everything we do here on earth for God and for people in the name of God is what we build, what we send into eternity. What we build, what we do here for God for his purposes what we do for people in the name of God that is something that is stored up eternally something that is built eternally and what we build and what materials we build with will determine the quality of our internal life now you say like whoa what are you saying um aren't we all saved yes we're all saved uh, I mean not all saved okay I mean those that have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior I already see Pastor Rick like mm -hmm, what do you mean by that <laughs> I mean those that have and I hope all of you here and if not by the end of the service you'll get an opportunity to be saved and those that are watching on live those that have accepted Jesus in, uh, into their life they have received eternal salvation but in eternity not all of us will be equal okay it's not socialism God doesn't believe in socialism. Bible doesn't teach socialism. There's no equality in heaven. There is going to be ranks. There is going to be different functions, different positions. There will be rewards and there will be different things that are attached to the rewards. Now, just the fact that you're making it to heaven is already very, very good. Okay. You're going to live in a perfect place. You're going to live in a paradise full of peace, full of joy, serenity. I mean, this is, trust me, better than down there. Okay? So it's great. But we're not going to be in heaven just floating around with little wings and harps and singing hallelujah 24-7. Okay? There's going to be eternal life. And that eternal life depends on what materials were sent up there being on this life for eternity listen this life is a preparation for next it's like a baby in the womb they have life and they're in that little world but that world is temporary and the world outside of the womb is much bigger and greater in the same sense this life everything we do in this life for God gets transferred into our heavenly account so first Corinthians chapter uh, 3 verse 11 15 let's let's read this for no one can lay a foundation other than one that's already laid which is Jesus Christ if anyone builds on this foundation using gold silver costly stones wood hay or straw their work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light it will be revealed with fire and the fire will test it the quality of each person's work if what he has built survives the builder, the builder will receive reward if it's burned up listen to this the builder will suffer loss but yet will be saved so it's not talking this is not talking about works it's not talking about salvation by works it's talking about the rewards that we will be receiving 
and the judgment of seat of Christ when we face him. He will suffer loss but yet will be saved even though only as the one escaping through flames. Pretty much just getting to heaven with empty hands but hey kudos at least he got to heaven. Everything we do here and we send in there will be tested by fire. Bible says that the eyes of the Lord Jesus Christ are like the flaming fire. When he will look at you, he will look at everything you've done, he will see through it and everything that was done without quality, it says here, will be burnt up. So there's two things that I see that determines the quality of the materials that we're building. There's probably more but the two things that I'm going to present it to you and it's good enough for me if you ask. First thing is motives. What we do and why we do it. Would you continue to do what you do for God if you did not receive a recognition or reward? Why are you doing what you're doing? In church, why are you serving? outside of the church when you how you treat people what you do with people how you utilize the gifts and talents that God has given you and what motives are behind it are you using to build yourself up your kingdom your influence your platform or are you truly serving God despite of your position everybody wants to call themselves a servant of God or likes to call themselves servants until they get treated as a servant okay the moment you tell him, hey, go ahead and do this and this. Where's my please? Please and thank you. Okay. Servants are not asked please and thank you. Okay. I'm not saying we shouldn't be polite. I'm not saying we shouldn't be courteous and cultivate culture of honor. But I am saying we should check our attitudes and our motives. What we do for God and why are we doing? Or for the lack of things doing the serving God and serving His people, serving the body of Christ. We say, oh, I just don't have a motivation to serve. Motivation comes out of right motives. Motivation. If you don't have right motives, you will not have a motivation to serve God with clean and pure heart. So number one is motivation. Second one that I see here, actually write this down. Pure motives are precious materials. Pure motives are precious materials. The second, ones, the second one that I see is efforts. What kind of effort are you giving to God? Are you giving God your best? Are you giving God half-hearted? Are you giving God leftovers? Or are you, are you giving God anything at all? The effort, the quality of your efforts matters. Serve God with joy and gladness in our spirit? Or do we constantly murmur and complain and we're one of those people that our leaders would love to avoid if we would love to not greet if it was possible because you know the moment you greet them there's gonna be complaining and whining and saying how things are bad and wrong. Okay and how everybody's a hypocrite and how church is full of hypocrites. Well welcome to the church. Yeah, join just one more. What are we, how are we serving God? Do we give God our best or do we give Him leftovers? When we work on our business, we go above and beyond and we work hard. We make sure things are good. But when it comes to the house of God, we bring Him leftovers. We bring you, you know, when it comes to our business, we bring creativity, we bring effort, we bring quality. But when it comes to the house of God, we are lazy, we are uh, dysfunctional, we are not, uh, we're not on time. We just give God leftovers. We give Him no effort. The Bible says everything we do for God will be tested. In Malachi chapters, uh, chapter 1 verse 7 and 8 says this. Let's read it. Let's see. I'm going to read from CEV translation. It says this. You embarrass me by offering worthless food on my altar. Then you ask, how have we embarrassed you? You have done it by saying, what's so great about the Lord's altar? When we hold sacred things, when we hold the altar of God, when we hold the word of God, when we hold the ministry, when we hold the house of God in contempt, they say, ah, it's, ah, it's just a house. No, it's the house that God dwells in. Oh, it's just the church. No, it's the body of Christ. It's his bride. Oh, it's just, I, I don't need church. No, you do need church. And when we treat it with contempt, we show carelessness. 
verse 8 says this, but is wrong to, uh, but isn't it wrong to offer animals that are blind, lame and sick? Because just try to give those animals to your governor. They certainly wouldn't be pleased. They shouldn't, they certainly wouldn't please him or take or make him want to help you. What kind of effort do we bring and give to God? What kind of quality material do we send there to eternity? David, I love David. He's one of my favorite characters and David he understood these things. And that's why one of the reasons why I think David was a man after God's own heart. Because he said that I will not give God anything that costs me nothing. I will not give God anything that costs me nothing. We must always bring our best. You can afford to do 80% of your effort in your business. 50% of your uh, effort in your business. I'm not saying you shouldn't put any effort. But I'm saying you could get away with it. But when it comes to God, your effort has to be 100%. You have to go 110%. You have to go an extra mile. You have to make sure the things that you do, the things that you offer, the things that you bring to God are your best. Your best attitude, your best attendance, your best, uh, your best offerings, your best service, your best attitude. Everything about you that is presented to God must be best. Remember this life is short and this life is preparation for eternity. What are you building in eternity? And second question is how are you building it there? Will it survive the test of fire? Say it with me, tested by fire. Say it again, tested by fire. All right. So that's in eternity. Let's talk about here on earth in this life. We're also building. We're building our marriages. We're building our um, families. We're building our careers. We're building our businesses. We're building uh, our ministries. We're building in this life. And in this life, everything we build will be tested by water. Okay, say it with me. Tested by water. Okay, and this is where it's going to bring me to um, the main scripture that I want to read today and encourage us for 2023, the foundations for 2023. Um, let's go to Luke chapter 6 verse 46 to 49 and let's read it together. So why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say, I will show you what it's like when someone comes to me listens to my teachings and then follows it. It is like a person building a house who digs deep and lays a foundation on a solid rock. When flood waters rise and break against it, the house is stands firm because it is well built. But anyone who hears and does not obey, it's like a person who builds a house right on the ground without foundations. When the flood floods sweep down against the house, it will collapse into heaps of ruins. I was building a custom home uh, one, at one time for this one customer and um, we had plans already, we had permits and we got the excavation going and they start digging for foundation. And then I get a call from a contractor, from a guy that's doing excavation, digging out the foundation. He calls me and said, listen, um, so it looks like the back of the house does not have a virgin soil. It's been brought up and it has not settled well yet. Um, and on the back right corner of the house, we have to go deeper to get to the virgin soil so that the foundation does not sink and house does not collapse. I said, okay, well, usually we go about two feet deep and then lay the footing and then your stem wall comes around and then this is where you're framing and the subfloor goes in. I'm gonna give you a little lesson on construction. Okay let's do this. So he calls and says we gotta go deeper and I'm like well first question is how much is it gonna cost and then how deep we're going. He's like okay let's let's do this. So then afternoon I decided to stop by and see how the foundations were digged up so we're getting ready for uh, schedule uh, guys to do the foundations, pour in the foundations. I come and the right side, the back right side of the house is like seven foot deep. Like I'm standing in the hole and the, and the ground is above me. I was like, 
was like, bro, were you digging to go to China or what? Like, what, what what's going on here? And he is like, well, this is was this was as far as we had to go to get to the to the virgin soil, so that you have a solid foundation. So, keep this in mind as I'm talking to you about this. First, when I listen, when I uh, when. Anytime I would read this scripture, and this is the way it was taught in, 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 in Sunday school for me, is that these were the two men, one that has Jesus in his life and one that is non-believer does not have Jesus in his life. One, his life is, um, you know, successful and, 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 and established and one, his life is in ruins. And, uh, um, but when I read this scripture, I actually understand that this scripture is not talking about a believer and non-believer. This scripture is actually talking about two believers. Okay. Two believers that come and listen to his words and listen to his teachings. But there is a distinct difference between the two of them. One follows it, obeys it and one doesn't. It's two believers. Two people who listen to the same podcast read the same book, read the Bible, but the difference is one obeys it and one does it. So what is the foundation then? First of all, Jesus is our rock. Jesus, the Word of God is that rock, but our foundation is our application of God's Word. Just because you know the word, that doesn't mean you have the foundation. We don't see here that the other guy did not have a rock to build on. Bible says he just chose not to dig deep and get to the rock and lay the foundation. Meaning begin to apply the word of God into their life. Not everybody who comes to church, not everybody who reads the Bible, listens to podcasts, reads the books, has a well-built life. But those that obey and apply the Word of God has a well-built marriage, family, finances, and a life, ministry as all together. Everybody has soap or shampoo or body wash at, in their house. But not everybody takes a shower and washes their hands often enough. Okay. And the soap is as good and as, as, it's, as, it's effect, uh, as effective as you apply it. Not as you have it in your household. Some people come around and you're like, bro, come on, man. You got water, you got soap, just use it. Okay. I wonder how, how much sometimes that's what Jesus, when we come around him and our life is in hips and ruins and our life stinks and God says, look, I give you everything you need for life and righteousness, everything to build a good life. Just use it, apply it. So if the quality of our eternal life depends on the quality of the material that we send into eternity, the quality of our life here on earth depends whether you have a foundation or you don't. Listen to me again. Not whether you know the word and you can quote the scripture. Whether you uh, listen to podcasts and read a bunch of books. But whether you apply it in your life or not. There are people that get saved and start reading the Word of God and they're like, wow, this is, this gives me instruction for life. And they know a little bit, but they take it applied. You look at their life and God begins to build their life. You see their life has been built. You see the marriage is, is growing. You see their finances are growing. You see their life is growing. God is beginning to use in the, min, in the ministry. And then you see somebody who grew up in a Christian home, knows the Bible from A to Z, but take this, takes this word in contempt. It, they read it just to, to get a check mark. And so their consciousness doesn't condemn them. But if you dig deep, deep into their life, if you look into their life, they apply it very little. And therefore when you look at their life, 
there is no fruit to their life. Listen, this in this life, your foundations, your house, everything you built will be tested by water. Take my word for it. 2023 that we're going into is going to be a difficult year. It's going to be difficult year all around financially, politically, food shortages and so forth so on all around the world we will even feel it in the United States but those that have solid foundations those that not only know the word of God but apply it they will live in the, in the, in the land of Goshen well where Israel uh, where, where Egypt will suffer darkness all around there's going to be light in Goshen where there's going to be shortage all around. Those that have the Lord as their foundation. I mean they apply the word. They will be prosperous. Another thing that I observe from this scripture. Is that. The building of the house. Is happening in the good times and good weather. Now it's like yeah. You don't build it in a storm. I know it's common sense isn't it? But for some reason that common sense from construction does not translate into a practical day, in the pra in, into a practice in our, in, our, in our everyday life. What I mean. We don't take care of our marriage until we start having some issues in our marriage. Then we run for counseling. Like, it's all good. I'm all for it. But when times are good we're vacationing everywhere, having good times, but you won't see, you won't see them in a marriage seminar or listening to marriage podcasts and books, reading books and actually taking and applying it because you build your marriage not when things are bad, but when things are good. When things are bad, you are in surviving mode. You use different tactics. You do different things. You go to marriage counseling. You go to deliverance. You go to inner healing. You go you use other various tools but that's a moment of survival not a moment of building. You're actually not building during that time. You're just surviving. Two businesses look the same during the good times. Every company is making money when the economy is good. But not every company is taking care of their Fundament, financial fundamentals, having proper ratio of savings and investments and using their money to invest and diversify their and, and, and minimize risk. So when the bad times and the downturn economy happens, they have a cushion, they can survive while the other company was enjoying good cash flow and enjoying good profits, but they did not take care of their foundations. They did not take care, they were not disciplined in their investment and keeping up their books. And then when economy uh, goes down when things start suffering the difference comes but during the good times there's no difference all of us have children growing up and when they're little they're sweet and they're awesome and many of our parents when things are good when they're little and young they're sweet they don't take time to build foundations and then when they grow up to be teenagers and there's problems, then we're trying to build them. We're trying to encourage them. We're trying to, come on, I taught you better. But did you? And we're trying to, now it's a survival mode. It's not a building moment. Now you're not a, po a parent anymore. You're more of like a coach. Seasons shifted. And so what I want to encourage you is that take your time to build in good times, not in when it's stormy. When children are little, this is your number one disciple. Somebody is teaching your kids, but is it you? School has them for 68 hours. Friends are around them. They're all learning. By their, their, are they learning the right things in there? And so there's two entities, there's two people that can really teach them the right ways is the church and you and you're the primary one because the church only has them for an hour a week. 
the rest of the time you have to teach him integrity you have to teach him uh you, you you have to teach him hard work you have to teach him life essential skills how many children grow up and they don't know even basic things girls don't know how to cook guys don't know how to change tire in a car i mean i'm talking about like basics and fundamentals of life and we're not even talking about character just to live life it's your and my job to teach them when they're little when times are good not when you start having problems with them you're trying to teach them about purity and sex and they're already having sex and they're already sleeping around it's too late you should have started when there was appropriate age in early life which is probably at this point now in our society around eight nine ten sadly as it is but it is and you are a parent you should be the first teacher that they hear about from you as uncomfortable as it might be you should be the one laying foundation for them in that area so when storm comes when they're teenagers they can withstand peer, uh, peer pressure they can withstand these floods waters in their life amen say tested by water you know test building in a, in a bad weather is not impossible but it's hard and costly I remember uh, when I was getting into construction I was uh, helping my uncle um, well, not helping working no more like my uncle was helping me to get some cash <laughs> I was working with Leo on one I think I think actually Paul you were there too I don't know but we were working uh, out somewhere a little further away from the city um, and so we were sheeting the roof it was a two-story house with a fairly steep roof that's probably about we were about 30 feet up it was pretty it was gusty and was windy and so I'm carrying this four by eight plywood and Paul knows what happened next <laughs> and then wind swoops me up I'm like 145 150 and I'm like holding on to this plywood for my dear life and it just like drifts me off the roof Woo! I felt like a Warren Brothers when they were trying to build a uh, plane to fly thank God I you know landed semi-safe you know with the plywood on top of my head but I was okay my point is that during a storm it's harder to build build in good times build in good times when things are good have savings have investments have various streams of uh, uh, income that which the Word of God talks about work on your marriage even when things are good apply it don't just read the book and like oh yeah that's awesome that's good you know hashtag happy marriage on Instagram and then uh, at home is a terrible and um, head biting marriage but like like actually apply it soap is as useful as you apply it I'm gonna finish up with this is that change the way you read God's Word starting today read to find instruction for life how to build your life every area your marriage your finances your relationship your attitude your character how you serve God I mean every single area there this is a manual for life this is not for you to read and to get a check mark oh I read the Word of God today so I'm a good Christian and I go to heaven you go into heaven regardless whether you read one verse in this Bible the only thing that qualifies you for heaven is grace but how this life will look like for you will depend is whether you use this word to build your life here don't read the Word of God so that you get cool new revelation does that revelation apply to your life you know our pastor one of the things about uh, about, uh, about our uh, pastor is that anytime we preach a message sometimes it would be a cool new revelation he'd come and he'd say how does that apply to your everyday life that's a good question yeah how does it you know and that's how sometimes we read the bible like, oh that's such a cool revelation but how does that apply to me what can i do in my marriage from this scripture that it's gonna take it's become half a percent better today what can I do in my business with my finances what can I do in my relationship what can I do in my ministry what can I do in my career that 
I lay a solid foundation from the scripture. Make a goal for 2023 to be obedient to God's word. It's simple. You're reading the gospels. Jesus prayed. So therefore I'm praying. That's it. Jesus worshipped. So I worship. But you know, it's not just my, it's not my thing. It doesn't matter whether it's your thing or not. You worship. Jesus helped the poor. Well, I give to church. Let's church take care of it. No, Jesus helped the poor. I do it because I'm laying a foundation in my life. Bible says, whoever, whoever gives to the poor lends unto God. It's principle of God. Jesus loved people. Are you loving and kind and compassionate? I'm talking about guys, I'm talking about very basic things. Jesus on the Sabbath went to temple and some of us make excuses why we don't go to church. On Sabbath we see throughout the scripture, on Sabbath he was in temple, on Sabbath he was in temple and some of us we outgrew Jesus, we're more spiritual than Jesus. I don't need church, I'm spiritual, I got heart, I believe God in my heart. Oh really? So you're better than Jesus and if Jesus went to temple? every Saturday you don't have to go to church every single week now is that what you're saying guys let's not over spiritualize things the word of God is a manual is an instruction for our life Jesus shared his uh, uh preached the gospel are you sharing your faith Jesus made disciples are you in a home group are you being discipled so that you can make disciples it's a simple things guys how we're dealing with our finances how our approaches in finances. Take Proverbs and read one book of Proverbs a day. That will give you practical instruction how to deal in the area of your finances and other areas but especially in that area. It's simple things like Bible says wife honor your husband. That's it. There's no need to spiritualize it. No need to to dig for deeper revelation. Just honor your husband. Husband love your wife. Bible says that he loved his wife, uh, he, uh, that husbands should love their wives like Jesus loved his bride, like he loved his church unconditionally. Despite of their shortcomings and mood swings, I'll just leave it there. Okay. Parents, raise your children in the way of the Lord. Are we, are we actually raising our children? Or are we letting life raise them? It's being built but without the foundation. We've got to be intentional about our build. If we want our life to stand. If we want our life to stand. And I'm finishing with this. Philippians chapter 2 verse 8 to 11. And being found in appearance as men, he humbled himself and became obedient to death and even death on the cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place. You want your life to be exalted? Be obedient to God's word. Apply God's word foundation in your life is not the knowledge of the Word of God. It's the application of His Word. Amen. Ask God for grace to be a doer of the Word. Bible says that our faith without works is dead. Be a doer of His Word. That's my challenge to myself. That's my challenge to you. Be a doer of God's Word. Amen. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content and this was a blessing to you, would you help us and hit thumbs up so that it could help more people to discover this video. It costs you nothing but it can go a long way to help with the algorithm. As well as if you're not subscribed to our channel, hit subscribe, click on the bell so that you can be reminded each time that we upload videos. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. If you're interested in learning more about Hungry Gen, our internship, our conferences, deliverance and so many other things, go to HungryGen.com for more information. And as always, remember, better is not good enough, the best is yet to come.